In this video, I'm going to explain relays. Relays are very common in the industry and in everyday life. What a relay is, is a coil of wire. Now, if you understand electromagnetism a little bit, uh, I'll give you a brief, I'm not going to go too in-depth, but when, when you put power to a coil, in this case DC power, of wire that's all coiled up, it'll create a magnetism. So it'll act like an electromagnet, like a magnet. So uh, we use that in relays, because when we put power to this coil, represented here by a coil, when we put power to the coil, it's going to move something. So in this case, it's going to move the armature. This spring-loaded piece of metal is going to come down in this simplified drawing when we apply create magnetism. What that's going to do is there then open or close this switch. It's going to open this switch. So between common and normally closed, it's closed right now. When this comes down, it's going to close this switch. And this one's going to open. So the states are going to change. So the switch that's now closed is going to open and the switch that's now open is going to close. So we can just show that, but when this armature comes down, now this is going to connect and this is going to open. So that's the basis of all relays. When we apply electricity, it the contacts or switch inside changes state. So it's an electrically operated switch. A uh, regular switch you would use with your hand or device would activate it. In this case we apply power when we want the contacts or switches to change state. Relays come in a number of forms and they're not always called relays. In this case we have a contactor. Contactor is used for applying power to a motor typically or other large device. So in elevators we use it to turn on the pump or the, the hydraulic power unit. So in this case we'd have up to three phases of power. So we'd have power, power, power coming in and power going out to the three wires, two or three wires on the pump. We'll get into that more later when we talk about hydraulic power units. So that's a contactor, but of course it has a coil inside which we can power up here and whenever we power it up, the armature is going to pull in and close these contacts. This is a relay as well, although it's called a solenoid. The solenoid is used in our case for high current DC for our deck lift product, which you may be familiar with. And it has a coil and a set of normally closed and a set of normally open contacts. So when we power this up, this contact will open and this one will close. All three of these devices are relays. They have different names sometimes, but they're all relays. Relays can also be very small on a circuit board, soldered in, or they could be round or other shapes. But they always have a coil and a number of contacts. Now, relays come in with single contacts, double con two pole, so two contacts, uh, three contacts, four contacts, etc. And then they also have this is called double throw. This is called, it, can, it has clo open and closed. Uh, other relays may only close, which is the case with the, with the contactor. It only has three co contacts that are open and they close when you power it up. So there are different configurations, but the principle is the same. We apply power to a coil and one or more contacts will change state. I hope this helps you understand relays better. Why do we use relays? What are relays used for? Typically relays are used if we want have a little bit of power going through the switch to turn on the relay, which is then sending a lot of power to the motor, let's say. Or we could have DC power going through switches or sensors, turning on a relay, which then sends AC power to other parts of the system. Here we have a new circuit. In this circuit we have our relay, which I explained earlier. The relay is an electrically operated device. 
We apply power to the relay and it will close a contact, just like a switch. So in this case, the, the switch is turning on the relay. The relay is turning on the light. You'll see an electrical drawing to follow how this is done. The wiring is getting more confusing, but you'll see when you look at the electrical drawing that it's actually quite straightforward. Here we have the electrical drawing again for the circuit you just witnessed. We have a switch which turns on a relay, which we've called R1. And then the contact for that relay, one of the contacts or switches that that relay activates, here are designated by terminal 6, terminal 9, as on the relay. That contact will close whenever the relay gets power and send power to the light. So this switch controls the light bulb, the relay controls the switch or contact. 